In this episode of the CNC Plasma Build, we'll drill some holes. Uh, we'll get the last linear rails mounted onto that box section. And then for no other reason than I've got all the tools, I might as well get on and do it. Uh, I machine a custom nut to hold the ball screw on. Then we put it all together and we get some movement. Welcome back to the workshop. So in the last video we got the X axis finished, so now we've got X, Y and Z complete and all moving. But now what we need to do is get this gantry here uh, mounted onto the main base plate, so it gives it something to move on. So I've already made a start on this, as you can see I've got all the holes drilled and tapped for the rails. I didn't bother filming that because you saw me do that last time on the X axis, so it's pretty much the same thing. And some other holes as well, and then if we look up here, uh, we've got the support that goes under here as part of the main base frame. I've already drilled quite a lot of the holes and we've just got a few to finish off. Okay, so we've just used the edge finder to pick up off X and Y and now we've uh, just put this spot drill in. So three millimeter spot drill and root zero zero. And then on the drawing here, I just need to go to these coordinates. So 10, 20, 30, 20 and so on, and just drill those out to six. They're a through hole to allow us to bolt this down to the main frame. Okay, so 10 in X. Okay, and Y is uh, 20. Spot it and open it up. Three more to do, do the other end, and then this piece is done. All right, so after a bit of clean up, here it is. So we've got our holes in there and all the other ones we need as well. So this is like a, a stiffening, supporting beam. That's our main beam on top. The rails will be on there and this will go on here. And then these large holes are here to get the, uh, hopefully, yeah, get the socket set in. So what we're basically going to end up doing is bolting this to that. I've got some little, uh, Little M5, which, which I think will do the job in four places. Now, the thing I've got to do is get them down inside the box section. So I think we'll just tape them to the edge of a ruler and just drop them all in the holes and then hopefully we can screw them together. So before I tighten it, just make sure this is effectively a spacer. So it's upside down now, but there'll be uh, studs that come through here that bolt this whole assembly onto the main base that will sit in here. So this edge needs to be reasonably flush and that edge needs to be flush. I think the next bit's going to be easier. I'll just get this held in the vise. Okay, when I laid these holes out, I used the rails and the plate and the carriages to get it all lined up. So I got one rail in, bolted all that together, and then used that to index across to get the final set of holes. Same thing I did when I built the X-axis gantry over there. So it's already basically just a drop on. 
and everything's tightened up so it should still be in the same location so we'll get this in get the first rail roughly dialed in with this edge i've now found out these this extrusion is not perfectly straight so we'll get it pretty close and assume the rail is straight rather than you know try and bend it to suit uh, and then the rear should be okay so let's get that uh, let's get this assembled onto there and I'm going to need to remove this safety tape that just stops the uh, stop the carriage whizzing off the end. Okay, I've got the caliper set to six, so we'll just use the little feature at the end and get these pretty close. Well, I'm just putting these in temporarily just so the carriages can't fall off the end. Um, it will be a proper spacer stopper thing, but that'll do for now. Right, so we have our main plate moves okay on there. I think we can get uh, the gantry mounted onto this bit. Might change the plan. I think once I get that gantry on, it's going to be like a massive T shape. I've got very little space left to build it, so I think it makes sense to just make sure uh, the ball screw is going to fit onto here and the stepper and everything. So we'll get that mounted, and then what I'll probably do is put this in the vise and then put the main gantry on, and then that will be it assembled. So uh, yeah, and there's one small reason that I can't fully put it together, but let's make sure at least. Yeah, we do a dry fit and uh, all the rest of the parts are going to go. Right, we'll start with the stepper motor. I assume you've seen this before, but this is just 3D printed bracket. I think it was PETG for this. Yeah, then we've got the ball screw next and then I 3D printed this housing here so it holds the ball nut in place and then it also because of this channeling it allows all the cables to come up uh, through here and then out and carries on onto the main this plate here and then there'll be a cover that goes over the top so I thought that's quite a neat way to do it but it's no good being neat if it doesn't fit so let's see if we get that in there I'll put the coupling on, but um, I can't fully complete this because, as I mentioned a minute ago, the bit I'm short of is the M10 by one nut. Uh, I forgot to order just enough. I only ordered two because I ordered one for each ball screw, and of course I need three. Essentially, I had one ball screw already. I only ordered two more, and I forgot to order a third spare nut, but that's okay. Decided. I've got um, I've got an M10 by one tap and plug, so or die. Sorry, I'm going to make my own. Be quicker than trying to order one. I think I'll replace these with button heads. This will do for now. Okay, as you can see we're over by the lathe, I decided to make my own nut. This is M10 by one, so that's not a standard size, that's a very fine pitch. Um, I can't seem to find these to buy singly or in small packs in the UK, so rather than wait a week or two for it to come from China, I've got a lathe, may as well make it, I'll have it done pretty quickly. So in terms of what we're trying to make, we're trying to make one of those square nuts that goes onto the end of the ball screw, so it'll be M10 by one in the middle. So across the flats, 16.9 to get a 17 mil spanner on it. And then obviously we've got to turn this out of round stock first before we go to the CNC machine and uh, mill out those flats. And so quick calculations using Pythagoras. So 16.9, 16.9. So hypotenuse there, 23.9. So that's the diameter we need. 
and then we can machine that down. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so this needs to be 23.9. I think I'll, I'll probably turn it all down to that, and then the nut will be just on the end, and that will allow me to stick it out a bit from the collet, just give me clearance from the CNC machine uh, collet as well, and I cut the flats, so the nut will basically be somewhere near the end. Right, let's uh, turn that down. Okay, we've got our diameter size, so we're just going to put our pilot in here and we'll drill this out to 8.8, .8, which is the tapping size for M10 fine. I think I'm just going to hand turn this, it's a taper tap, straight fluted and we're in steel so I don't want it to snap. thought I'd just give myself a guide so um, if we touch off on that diameter there and then we subtract the across flats divide that by two that should give us the amount we need to go down by so I've just zeroed it I just touched it on there and it was Should give us something to aim for and make sure we don't overshoot when we machine the flats. Alright, let's go and do that next.
got 17 mil spanner here. Let's just check that fits. Okay, looks good. Okay, so after a bit of cleanup, uh, it looks like that. I just ran the tap through again just to make sure that thread was clean. Put a little chamfer on each side and then just took off the sharp edges. So that's ready to go now. So we'll clean that up, drop it in some cold blue. That might help yeah, stop it rusting for a little while at least. And then we'll get some oil on it and hopefully that will be uh, our completed part. So let's just clean this up and then we'll drop it in there. So I'm just going to use a bit of W40. It's got paraffin in it, so that should be reasonable degreasing. Yeah, I think we can start assembling ball screw here. Okay, we get the spacer on and the nut. the coupling. Okay, as you can see, we've got the x-axis. That's the fixed part that sits on the main base frame. And that is clamped down to the table there. And then we've got our driver and ball screw hooked up, as you saw me connect a minute ago. And then that's the main drive plate uh, and essentially it's going to be a cantilever arm that sticks out that way and that assembly then sits on there so there's three holes in that so i'll offer it up and you can see roughly where it goes but i haven't got space because it's it's nowhere near uh, big enough here the table's not big enough so all we'll do we're just going to um, we've got the stepper driver hooked up again power supply and we'll just move this along and make sure it's nice and smooth make sure we've got motion there and then ultimately once we've got the base complete, we can put the arm on. We know the X, uh, we, sorry, we know the Z and the Y already work. Um, so if this works, then we know it should work together. Okay, I've double checked that I've got resistance between each pair of the coils. That's very important, otherwise you can damage these. And we're at 24 volts. I know that because I've just checked it. Uh, I think that's it, we're ready to go. All right, so I've put it on the minimum setting. Let's switch on. Okay, and we need to enable it. Uh, what's happened? Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm going to notice this one. <laughs> there we go. And now, yeah, it's turning very slowly. It's quite smooth. Okay, we were on the low jumper then. I've just put it on the medium, so let's switch on. And then enable. And get it coming this way a little bit. Oh, that might hit the bolt, so I'll turn that around. A little bit of noise from the bearings, but they are new, so maybe they'll bed in. I can try different speeds if it's any better. Oh, 
Now I know on the other axes and I turned the speed up and it just stalled out. Uh, we're only on low voltage so there's no point in uh, overdoing it. Yeah, seems pretty smooth. Happy with that. Mm, Alright, let's go up a little bit. All right, pleased with that. I think we can call that a success. Moves nice and smoothly. Uh, no strange noises, anything like that. There's a little bit of noise coming from those recirculating balls in the linear guideways, but uh, I'm sure that'll bed in. Um, I'm just going to offer the arm up just so you can see what it looks like. It doesn't fully fit, but it'll get you a bit more of a, an idea about how it's all going to come together. Because this is like the back of the machine. The front is over there. And the idea of having that cantilevered arm is so you can put big sheets or odd size sheets, having to cut them down. You know, long sheets whatever and just put the bit under the machine you want and cut something out that's the basic idea but you know having lifted that arm it is quite heavy so uh yeah well we'll see how we go anyway i'm going to lift it in position you can see roughly what it would look like right i'm not going to bolt it on here i don't want this to come undone or you know come off the clamp and the whole thing come crashing to the floor but with the those are access holes and basically there's holes on the other side for the bolts to go in and the whole arm as you can probably guess how heavy it is or maybe i have to balance it halfway yeah okay so essentially oh i could put it on there oh that's handy <laughs> there's a little ledge that it's resting on uh tell you what if i move it that way let's get this out of the way first that would be even better. Now, which way is that? Uh, oh, lucky guess. Yeah, something like that. And then this is not fully on, but basically the you've got this kind of spreader plate, so that will go in there like that. And then from the top, you can put your 10 mil hex key in there and it will bolt this onto there. And then the idea of that is there's some pretty generous oversized holes and that'll allow me to get this lined up so it's 90 degrees. So I can actually square this up quite easily and then just nip these up. I was thinking about putting some kind of, not dowels, but like a kind of keeper system. So once it's locked in place, you got maybe a couple of bits that kind of wedge it like that. But you know, it's, it shouldn't, the only reason it all get I guess get out of squares if it hits something, you know, while it's cutting, something flips up and it hits it, but probably not that likely. And I don't think it'll move, but we'll think about that. Anyway, hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea about what it's going to look like. And uh, yeah, pleased with it so far. So in case it's not too obvious, there'll be rails that go forward on this side and that side and then across there. So basically the cutting area will be in the middle where the kind of the desk is there and there'll be some short legs and it'll be on wheels. I think I might put it on three wheels at least because uh, it's going to sit on the floor and I'm going to roll it out into position, cut it and then push it away. That will make sure it's always, it's never going to twist or anything like that. And what I might do, if, so I've put the three wheels, uh, so one in the centre and one at each corner here, and then have two kind of outriggers. So once it's in whatever position I use it on the floor, because the floor is quite bumpy, I can just drop down two auxiliary little legs that just give it some stability if I need it, and then retract those, you know, because they're kind of like adapt to the floor, essentially. But might be overthinking it, I don't know. Uh, so that's the status so far. Yeah, I'm really happy with it, I think. Uh, it started to look quite big and getting quite real now. It's nice to see it come spring to life from the CAD. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe. If you want to be notified when I upload the next video, feel free to hit that bell icon in the corner. Uh, if you want to make a comment, then feel free to do that. It's nice to hear what you think. And with that, uh, we will see you next time.